Hi guys, thank you for joining me. Today what I wanted to do is talk about combining mediums. Now this is something that I've been asked to uh, put together a course about over and over again. Um, and I really love combining different drawing mediums. So one of the things that we can achieve by combining different mediums is a richness and a depth of color that is hard to create with a single medium. So here are a few examples of drawings that I've done using techniques similar to what I'm going to go over today. And one thing that I really do enjoy about uh, combining different mediums is that the saturation of color almost starts to resemble that of an oil painting. Okay, so this last image here is a result of a four-week Zoom class where I combined watercolor, colored pencil, and ink. Okay, so now without any further ado, let's take a look at some of the clips using these techniques. So the first step is laying a watercolor wash over a dampened paper, and this is a cold pressed Arches watercolor paper. And I'm using cobalt violet and ultramarine blue. And as I spread this out onto the wet paper, we can see that the value gets lighter and the color becomes less intense. And I'm also leaving negative spaces where I'm going to add vibrant orange color for my clouds. One thing we want to remember is that all of the mediums that we are going to be using, with the exception of the ink, are somewhat transparent. So it is very important that we reserve the paper for any areas where we are planning to add additional colors. So now I've mixed up a brown using my three primaries, red, yellow, and blue, and I'm filling in these darker areas of the mountains. However, there are lighter snow patches that are scattered throughout these dark passages. So once again, I am going to leave those areas alone for right now. And when I'm ready, I'm going to go back with additional colors and fill those patches in. So to fill in these negative spaces, I'm switching to my colored pencils because I can control exactly where I'm putting the color. I find it easier to work with pencils for smaller sections than the watercolor. And you can see that first color that I put down was a yellow, and now I'm adding a purple over some of the watercolor sections. And this helps to alter the color. Um, I'm making it a bit darker, and I'm also warming it up with the purple. Something else that I try to be very conscious of is my edges, so areas where the light clouds and the darker sky come together. Um, I'm looking at the transition of color and also the softness of the edge. So I've just added some orange colored pencil, and now I'm taking a wet brush and I'm blending my colors to eliminate this harder edge. The watercolor passages are now completely dry and I'm realizing that they're a little bit too blue. So I'm taking a warmer purple colored pencil and I'm just laying another pass of color over top of the dry watercolor and it is making everything much warmer and also darker in value, which is more similar to the photo reference that I'm working from. The light and dark tonal contrasts will also make the sky appear more dramatic. So now once again, I'm taking a wet brush and I'm blending the area of colored pencil that I've just laid down. And we can immediately see how much warmer the sky now looks. So as I work my way down into the snow banks, I am noticing that the snow is pretty dark. So I'm using a darker blue colored pencil to lay down my base layer. And I'm going to most likely blend this out with a damp watercolor brush and then lay additional colors on top of this. Um, and this is actually something that is very important to establish the, the right value for the snow because we typically think of snow as being white, but in this particular picture, I am seeing a lot of deep blues and blue violets. 
And this is due to the fact that it's late in the day and there's not a lot of light that's reflecting off of the snow. It's mostly in shadow. So now I'm noticing that the blue is probably a little bit too cool. So I'm going to use my pink color pencil and just lay a pass of pink over top of the blue. So now I'm ready to smooth out these colors using a wet watercolor brush. So I'm just gonna go over top of it one more time with the brush and blend everything together. As I focus my attention back on the distant hills, I'm noticing that there's a lot of uh, very thin trees that are falling right on the horizon line. And they're passing in front of the vibrant orange and purple clouds. So I'm taking my Pentel black ink pen and I'm just stippling in the vertical trunks of the trees to get the placement and once I've done that as you can see I'm now going back and adding the additional details such as the foliage and tree branches. So now I am noticing that I do need to add a few more lights and there are a few tricks that you can use to add lights into a watercolor piece such as this. Uh, so one way to do it is to add a lighter medium, and in this case I'm using a white charcoal pencil to add little specks of snow and additional tree branches and so forth. The other method would be to take a sharp tool such as a razor blade and scratch out some of the areas where you want to add the detail. So moving on to the water, I now want to establish a general color and value which is going to be fairly dark so i've already laid my blue and my purple colored pencil down and now i'm taking a damp brush once again and smoothing it out just as i did with the snow banks one thing that i'm trying to bear in mind is that the water is reflective so it is going to be reflecting some of the color that I see in the sky. So this will give uh, more unification to the colors and make things seem like they all exist within the same environment. And with landscape painting, that is very, very important because you are essentially working with light. Light is, you know, really flooding the scene. The light is what is affecting all of the colors. So it's important to understand the harmony and the balance of those colors. Now I am ready to break up the larger passage of color that I've just blended using uh, my colored pencil and I'm adding some additional details such as the ripples in the water and I'm using my dark blue colored pencil for that and I'm just creating a network of darker horizontal shapes to describe the ripples in the water and also the movement of the water. So now I'm really fine tuning my color in the sky and this is going to be hopefully my final layer and to do this I'm using a series of different colored pencils. So uh, once again I'm going over this with the dark blue but I'm going to add other colors such as orange and pink and this is really to control the value which is the degree of lightness or darkness of the color the chroma which is the intensity or the purity of the color and the hue which is the temperature of the color so these are all terms which i use when i discuss color and as an artist i think it's important to understand these terms uh, but even more so, it's important to understand how to control these various aspects of color. And once we are able to do that, the possibilities are really quite endless for what we can do with our pictures. And now, once again, I'm coming back to my uh, trees along the horizon line, and I'm adding some uh, more branches using my brown pen. I've also added some dark greens and grays into this area. And I'm just really going for that final level of detail. 
So here is the completed image, and I'm zooming in just to show a little bit more of the detail. And one thing that I want to really stress is the amount of time that I put into this. So most of the clips that I showed you were sped up, but if you look closely at some of the rocks here in the hills, you'll notice that there's lots of very small dots, and that's just something that takes a lot of time. Uh, so I used my pens for that, and I actually combined different colors there, even though it looks very dark. There is a combination of brown and green and gray and uh, all sorts of colors, which adds more depth. And this contrasts nicely against some of the lighter colors of the sky and the water and the snow. I am going to be putting together a full-length course soon on these techniques. And that information will be available on my website, which is www.riverafinearts.com.